Hey there, you're looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Noah looking at his reflection in the bathroom mirror, not quite recognizing the person staring back. His short brown hair, angular jaw, and broad shoulders all matched the 22-year-old man he saw each morning. And yet, something felt off. Some invisible disconnect, a subtle wrongness he couldn't quite put his finger on, but that unsettled him all the same. He splashed water on his face and took a deep breath, trying to shake the strange melancholy that often overtook him when getting ready for the day. Get it together, Noah, he muttered. You're just tired. But deep down, he knew fatigue wasn't the root of his discontentment. The feeling went bone deep, beyond superficial exhaustion. It was as if his very soul was weary. Noah finished his morning routine on autopilot, going through the motions of brushing his teeth and getting dressed without any enthusiasm. As he pulled on jeans and a plain t-shirt, the outfit felt ill-fitting, not just in size, but in self-expression. The clothing matched society's expectations for a male his age, but somehow wearing them made Noah feel like he was playing a role, putting on a costume that didn't suit him. Sighing, he grabbed his backpack and headed out to catch the bus to his college campus. Noah was in his final semester studying computer science. While he did well in his classes, he lacked the passion his peers seemed to have for the subject matter. It was as if he was going through life on a preset track laid down by outside forces, not an internal drive or desires of his own. Noah kept his head down as he boarded the bus, avoiding eye contact with the other passengers. Social interactions often drained him, requiring him to put on a facade of the man everyone expected him to be. Confident, assertive, masculine. It was a mask he found increasingly exhausting to wear. As the bus rolled through the city streets, Noah gazed out the window, his thoughts drifting. With each passing day, he felt more acutely aware that something wasn't right, that some vital part of himself lay dormant and repressed but he didn't know how to confront those feelings or what they meant. All he knew was that the sense of disconnection, of not fitting in his own skin, was getting harder to ignore. Noah spent the day going through the motions on campus, attending lectures, working on assignments, making small talk with classmates. But his heart wasn't in it. Even his movements felt stiff and contrived, his speech patterns formal and restrained in an attempt to project a masculine tone. By the time he returned to his small studio apartment that evening, he was depleted, his spirit rubbed raw from maintaining his usual facade. Tossing his backpack aside, Noah collapsed onto his bed and stared at the ceiling. Unbidden, tears pricked the corners of his eyes and trickled down his face. He felt lost, adrift, battered by emotions he didn't know how to interpret. A chasm had opened up inside him, a yawning emptiness aching to be filled with some nameless truth. Rolling over, Noah opened up his laptop and stared at the search bar. His fingers hovered over the keys, trembling slightly. Then, in a rush of desperate courage, he typed, What does it mean if I don't feel like a man? The results loaded, the glow of the screen illuminating Noah's tear-stained face. Article titles jumped out at him. Signs you might be transgender. Exploring your gender identity. How to know if you're trans. Noah's heart pounded as he clicked the first link with shaking hands. As he read, the words on the page seemed to reach out through the screen, wrapping him in a kind of astonished recognition. Testimonials from transgender people described the same feelings and experiences Noah had been struggling with for so long the disconnect from assigned gender, the sense of performing a role, the deep-seated unease in one's own body. Many trans people experience a feeling of discomfort with the gender they were assigned at birth, one passage read. This sense of misalignment between their internal identity and external presentation is called gender dysphoria. It can manifest as a persistent unease, a desire to change one's body, or an urge to express oneself as a different gender. Tears streamed down Noah's face as understanding crashed over him in waves. For the first time, there was a name for the nameless ache in his heart, 
an explanation for the emptiness that haunted him. The face staring back at him from the mirror each day wasn't his true self, but a mere mask, an ill-fitting costume he'd been forced to wear. Beneath that disguise, something else was desperately trying to break free. Noah read voraciously, devouring articles and personal accounts late into the night. He learned about the differences between biological sex and gender identity, the wide spectrum of gender expression. He read stories of people who had transitioned to live as their authentic selves and found peace and fulfillment in the process. For the first time in his life, Noah felt a flicker of hope. The road forward looked terrifying and uncertain, but at least now he had a map. He finally understood the root of his pain and had the language to describe it. He wasn't defective or broken. He'd simply been living in the wrong shape, trying to force himself into a mold never meant for him. Over the next few weeks, Noah continued researching transgender experiences. He took dozens of Am I Trans quizzes online, his results overwhelmingly pointing to yes. He lurked on forums and message boards, reading stories from people of all ages and backgrounds who had questioned their gender identity. Slowly, from the safety and anonymity of the internet, Noah gathered the knowledge and courage to confront his truth. Late one night, Noah stood once again in front of the bathroom mirror. But this time, when he looked at his reflection, he saw beneath the surface, glimpsing the self that had been buried for so long. With a trembling hand, he reached up and brushed his fingers across his cheek. I think I'm a girl, Noah whispered to herself. Speaking the words out loud sent a rush of mingled terror and exhilaration through her body. I'm transgender. This is who I am. Saying it didn't magically fix everything, Noah still felt afraid and uncertain. But it was a start, a crucial first step in shedding the skin that had never fit and becoming her authentic self. For the first time in forever, Noah felt a sense of rightness settle over her, a puzzle piece clicking into place. She met her own eyes in the mirror and, through her tears, smiled. The next day, Noah knew it was time to tell someone else. She needed to speak her truth out loud to another human being, to make it real outside the confines of her own mind. Noah's hands shook as she picked up her phone and dialed her best friend, Charlotte. Charlotte answered on the second ring, her cheerful voice sending a pang through Noah's chest. What if this changed things between them? What if Charlotte rejected her? Charlotte, there's something I need to tell you, Noah said, her voice quavering. It's, it's important. Can you come over? Of course, honey, Charlotte said immediately. I'll be right there. A half hour later, they sat together on Noah's couch, a tense silence stretching between them. Noah twisted her hands in her lap, struggling to find the right words. At last, she took a deep breath and met Charlotte's concerned gaze. Charlotte, I, I'm trans, she whispered. I've realized that I'm not meant to be a man. Deep down, I know I'm actually a woman. Tears spilled down Noah's cheeks as the confession left her lips. She braced herself for recrimination, for disgust, for the end of the closest friendship she had. But instead, Charlotte simply reached out and pulled Noah into a tight hug. Oh, sweetheart, Charlotte murmured. I already had kind of guessed after knowing you for years. I can only imagine how scary this must be. She rubbed soothing circles on Noah's back as Noah cried in her arms. Listen to me. This doesn't change our friendship one bit. I love you for exactly who you are. I will help you. Noah clung to her best friend, sobbing in relief and gratitude. Charlotte's unconditional acceptance felt like a port in a storm, an anchor in the upheaval of Noah's life. For the first time, Noah felt a tiny sliver of the suffocating weight on her chest begin to lift. She wasn't alone in this. She had someone in her corner. Over the next month, Noah began taking tentative steps to explore her identity. With Charlotte, she started experimenting with presenting as female in small, private ways, with Charlotte's loving support, Noah began taking tentative steps to explore her true gender identity. They started with small, private changes. 
little ways for Noah to dip her toes into the waters of femininity. The first thing Noah tried was shaving her legs. Charlotte helped her pick out a nice razor and shaving cream from the drugstore. They locked themselves in Noah's bathroom, giggling nervously as Charlotte taught Noah how to lather up and shave against the direction of hair growth. Noah felt a flutter of excitement as she ran the razor up her calf for the first time, watching the shaving cream and stubble slough away to reveal smooth, soft skin beneath. The simple act of grooming her body in a feminine way lit a quiet joy inside her, like she was finally caring for herself in the way she'd always longed to. Next came skincare. Charlotte showed Noah her extensive collection of lotions, serums, and facial masks, patiently explaining the purpose of each product. They made a spa night out of it, sipping wine and giggling as they smeared their faces with green clay and cucumbers over their eyes. As Noah massaged moisturizer into her freshly shaved legs, marveling at their silky texture, she felt a piece of herself slot into place. This act of self-care, so often denied to men, felt more right than anything ever had before. Slowly, Noah expanded her feminine expression. She started by incorporating subtle touches into her daily routine. A dab of floral perfume on her wrists, clear lip gloss, a touch of mascara when she felt bold. Wearing women's underwear became a secret thrill, a hidden expression of her identity that only she knew about. Noah started with basic cotton panties, then graduated to lacy boy shorts and cheeky briefs in pastel hues. The first time she slid a pair of silky panties up her newly shaved legs, Noah shivered at the feeling, a tingle of rightness. Bras were a revelation. The first time Charlotte took Noah to a department store to get fitted, Noah almost cried at the validating experience of having a matronly saleswoman wrap a measuring tape around her chest and declare her a 36A. Though she didn't need the support, just wearing a bra made Noah feel more female than she ever had before. Clothing was the final frontier. Noah felt intimidated by fashion at first, overwhelmed by the sheer variety of women's apparel. But Charlotte was endlessly patient, guiding Noah through the basics of women's style. They started with simple, androgynous pieces, leggings, tunic tops, flowy cardigans. The first time Noah slipped on a pair of buttery, soft leggings, she marveled at the way they hugged her legs, smoothing and shaping them in a way men's pants never had. Pairing them with an oversized sweater made Noah feel cozy and cute, free from the confines of restrictive male clothing. Over time, Noah worked her way up to more overtly feminine attire. She fell in love with the way skirts swished around her legs, the delicate feel of lace against her skin, the confidence boost of a well-fitting dress. Charlotte taught her how to accessorize with jewelry and scarves, adding pops of color and personal flair to her outfits. Dressing in women's clothing made Noah feel beautiful, desirable, authentic in a way nothing else ever had. When she twirled in front of the mirror in a sundress and watched the skirt flare out around her, she could almost see her true self reflected back, the girl she'd always been beneath the surface. As Noah's wardrobe evolved, so did her hair. She started growing it out from the short, masculine cut she'd always worn, enduring a few months of awkward stages before it settled into a choppy pixie style. Noah found she liked having more hair to play with. She learned to coax it into soft waves with Charlotte's curling iron, to pin it back with barrettes and headbands. The weight of it brushing her neck and cheeks became a constant affirmation, a reminder of her ongoing transformation. Slowly, Noah's outer self began to align with her inner truth. Each feminine change made her feel lighter, freer, more herself. And yet she still wrestled with doubt and dysphoria, unsure if she was trans enough to claim the label. I feel like an imposter sometimes, Noah confessed to Charlotte one night as they cuddled on the couch. Like I'm just playing dress up. I don't know if I'll ever be a real woman. Charlotte hugged her fiercely. You are a real woman, honey. You don't need to prove your womanhood through any particular rites of passage. If you feel like a woman inside, then that's what you are, period. 
Hearing that validation from her best friend brought tears to Noah's eyes. She clung to Charlotte, soaking in her unwavering support and acceptance. As the weeks went by, Noah continued to lean into her identity. She created a private Instagram account showcasing her feminine fashion, a secret garden where she could plant and tend to the seeds of her truth. She joined online forums for trans women, finding solace in the stories of others walking the same path. Slowly, Noah began to uncover the shape of the woman she wanted to become. She gave herself permission to experiment, to play, to make mistakes. She tried on different styles and aesthetics, like a snake shedding successive skins, learning what felt authentic and what didn't. There were moments of pure, unadulterated euphoria. The first time she nailed winged eyeliner, the day she found the perfect shade of red lipstick, the night she realized her more feminine voice was becoming natural. Each small victory felt like an unshackling, a step further away from the false self she'd been imprisoned in for so long. But there were hard days, too. Days when Noah felt hopelessly mired between genders, an imperfect imitation of a woman. Days when her broad shoulders and big hands seemed to mock her efforts at femininity. Days when the weight of other people's expectations crushed the air from her lungs, leaving her gasping with the pain of it. Noah knew she couldn't keep her truth confined forever. As her inner self blossomed, the disconnect between her authentic identity and the male role she performed for the world grew more unbearable by the day. She longed to live as her true self full time, to be seen and embraced as the woman she'd always been. But to do that, Noah would have to come out to her family. The prospect filled her with dread. Though her parents and younger sister Lily had always been loving, they were also traditional, with conservative views. Noah had no idea how they would react to the news that their son was actually their daughter. For weeks, she agonized over what to say and how to say it. She drafted dozens of coming out letters, pouring her heart onto the page only to crumple the attempts in frustration. Nothing seemed adequate to convey the depth and complexity of her experience. In the end, Noah decided to tell them in person. During dinner one night, heart pounding as she planned out the menu and set the table with trembling hands, Charlotte squeezed her shoulder before she left, promising to keep her phone close in case Noah needed support afterwards. Noah's family arrived right on time. Her mother, Elena, kissed her cheek. Noah drank in their affection, all too aware it might be the last time she experienced it for a while. All through dinner, Noah picked at her food, too anxious to muster an appetite. Her stomach churned with nerves as her family chattered around her, oblivious to the storm raging inside her. Finally, as Elena started to clear the plates, Noah cleared her throat. Wait, Mom, there's something I need to tell you all. Noah's voice shook, but she forced herself to meet her family's eyes. I've realized something about myself, something big. A loaded pause stretched out as they waited for her to continue. Under the table, Noah curled her hands into fists, nails biting into her palms. She inhaled a steadying breath. I'm transgender, Noah said. I've always felt different, disconnected from my assigned gender. I've been grappling with it for a long time, and I've come to understand that deep down, I'm not a man. I'm a woman. You could hear a pin drop in the ensuing silence. Elena's hand flew to her mouth, eyes wide with shock. Mateo's eyebrows furrowed as he processed Noah's words. Lily just looked confused. I don't understand, Elena said finally, her voice small and tremulous. How can you say you're a woman? You're our son. You've always been our Noah. I'm still the same person, Mom, Noah assured gently. I'm still your child. That hasn't changed, but I need you to know that the Noah you raised was never really me, not authentically. I've been wearing a mask, playing a role. Now I'm ready to show you my true self. Is this because of Charlotte? Mateo asked gruffly. Did she put this idea in your head? You've been spending so much time with her lately. No, Dad, Noah said firmly. This is me. It comes from within me. 
Charlotte has been an amazing friend, but she didn't cause this. She's just supporting me. Mateo shook his head, clearly struggling to wrap his mind around it. I just don't get it. You're a grown man, Noah. How can you suddenly decide to be a woman? It doesn't make sense. Noah bit back the urge to argue that nothing about this was sudden, that she'd been grappling with her identity for as long as she could remember. But she knew this was a lot for her dad to absorb. I know this is confusing, she said instead. Believe me, I've been confused too. It's taken me a long time to understand what I'm feeling. But I need you to hear me. This is who I am. I'm not choosing this any more than you chose to be a man. It's just my truth. Lily, who had been uncharacteristically quiet, spoke up then. So, does this mean you're like my sister now? Instead of my brother? Noah smiled tremulously at her. Yeah, honey, if that's okay with you. I'm still your sibling and I still love you just the same. That will never change. Okay, Lily said, a bit hesitant, but clearly trying to understand. I guess I always did want a sister, and I want you to be yourself, even if it's confusing right now. Tears sprang to Noah's eyes at her little sister's simple, guileless acceptance. She reached out and squeezed Lily's hand in gratitude. Elena and Mateo were still sitting in shocked silence, processing the bombshell Noah had dropped. I know this is a lot, Noah said softly. I don't expect you to understand it overnight. It's okay if you need time to wrap your heads around it. I just need you to know that this is my truth. I'm transgender, I'm a woman, and I'm done hiding it. From now on, I need to live authentically. And I really hope I can have your support, because I love you all so much. Elena reached out a tentative hand, eyes swimming with tears. Oh, my baby, of course we love you. We'll always love you no matter what. This is just a big adjustment. I don't know how to feel. I know, Mom, Noah said, covering Elena's hand with her own. Take all the time you need, but please know that I'm still me. I'm still your child, just a more honest version. Mateo blew out a heavy breath, dragging a hand down his face. I won't pretend to get it, he said gruffly. But you're my kid, and I guess if this is really who you are, then we'll find a way to understand it. Together. Noah's heart swelled with tentative hope and relief. It wasn't a resounding declaration of acceptance, but it was a start. Her family was trying in their own imperfect way, and that meant everything. Thank you, she whispered through her tears. Thank you for listening, for being open to this. I know it's not easy, but your support means more than I can say. They ended the evening with tearful hugs, each of them clinging to Noah a bit tighter than usual. She knew there would be challenges and misunderstandings ahead as her loved ones adjusted to her transition. But she also knew that this was a crucial first step, a leap of faith into living her truth. The next day, riding high on the adrenaline of coming out, Noah made an appointment with a therapist who specialized in gender identity issues. Dr. Kamal came highly recommended by the trans community forums Noah frequented. At their first session, the petite woman with kind eyes immediately put Noah at ease. Welcome, Noah, Dr. Kamal said warmly, gesturing for her to take a seat. I'm so glad you reached out. I know it takes a lot of courage to walk into a therapist's office, especially when you're grappling with something as profound as your gender identity. Noah smiled shakily, perching on the edge of the plush armchair. I'm just relieved to be here, to be honest. I've been dealing with this on my own for so long. It feels good to talk to someone who understands. Over the next hour, Noah poured out her story, all the years of discomfort and confusion, the recent revelations about her identity. Dr. Kamal listened attentively, asking gentle questions and reflecting Noah's feelings back to her. It sounds like you've been on quite a journey, the therapist said when Noah finished. And it's clear that you've done a lot of self-discovery and soul-searching to get to this point. That's really impressive, Noah. Noah ducked her head, feeling a flush of pride at the praise. I guess I have. It hasn't been easy, but I know I can't go back to denying my truth. 
I want to transition, to align my body with my identity. I'm just not sure where to start. Dr. Kamal nodded. Transitioning can feel overwhelming at first. There's no one right way to do it. It's a highly individual process. But a common first step for many trans women is to start hormone replacement therapy. That involves taking estrogen and anti-androgens to feminize your body and can have a big impact on mental health as well. Noah nodded eagerly. She'd been reading about HRT online, watching transition timeline videos with equal parts longing and trepidation. The idea of actually starting the process herself made her palms sweat and her heart race. I think I'd like to try that, she said, voice quavering only slightly. I know it's a big decision, but feeling more aligned in my body. God, I want that more than anything. Dr. Kamal smiled. I can certainly refer you to an endocrinologist who can get you started. In the meantime, I'd like to see you weekly to help support you through this process. Transitioning can be an emotional roller coaster, and having a space to process those feelings is so important. Noah left the session feeling lighter than she had in ages, clutching Dr. Kamal's referral note like a golden ticket. The thought of starting HRT filled her with a potent mix of excitement and anxiety. She knew it wouldn't be a magic fix for her struggles, but the promise of feeling even a bit more at home in her own skin was intoxicating. Two weeks later, after a consultation with an endocrinologist and a battery of blood tests, Noah left the pharmacy with two precious bottles in her purse, estradiol tablets and spironolactone, an androgen blocker. Her doctor had explained at length the effects they would have on her body over time, softening her skin, redistributing her fat, slowing her body hair growth. She might even develop small breasts, though that could take months or years. That night, Noah stood over her bathroom sink, heart hammering as she placed the little blue estradiol tablet under her tongue. It dissolved slowly, filling her mouth with a faintly sweet taste. Noah swallowed the Spiro with a swig of water and stared at her reflection, searching for any sign of change. Though she knew there would be no outward effects yet, Noah felt the magnitude of the moment settling on her chest. This is real, she whispered to herself. I'm doing this. I'm becoming myself. Over the next few months, Noah marveled at the gradual changes HRT wrought on her body and mind. Her skin took on a softer, smoother texture, the rough edges and razor bumps fading away. The constant oiliness that had plagued her since puberty dissipated, leaving only a dewy glow in its wake. More surprising were the emotional shifts. Noah had always struggled with bouts of unexplained irritability, her temper flaring at the slightest provocation. But as the estrogen flowed through her system, she found her mood stabilizing, the constant simmer of agitation cooling to a manageable level. She cried more easily now, tearing up at sappy commercials and soaring instrumentals. But they were good tears, cleansing tears, a release of all the pent-up emotions she'd stifled for so long. For the first time, Noah felt like she could breathe fully, no longer smothered by the weight of her own repression. Tucking became a necessity as Noah began dressing more femininely in public. She invested in specialty underwear and spent hours in front of the mirror, experimenting with techniques to create a smooth, seamless profile. But she was learning to be patient with her body, to celebrate the small victories and not berate herself for the persistent reminders of her old body. Noah's parents were trying their best, but still struggled at times to see past the son they thought they'd known. Elena tended to slip up with Noah's name and pronouns, each mistake landing like a tiny pinprick on Noah's heart. Mateo oscillated between gruff acceptance and obvious discomfort, fumbling to relate to his newly feminine child. Only Lily took to the changes like a duck to water, proudly telling anyone who would listen about her brave big sister. As Noah's appearance shifted, her internal sense of self blossomed to match it. She felt more grounded, more confident, more at ease in her own being than she ever had before. The constant background buzz of wrongness faded a little more each day, replaced by moments of pure, unadulterated gender euphoria. 
There was the giddy thrill of being called ma'am by a stranger for the first time. The quiet satisfaction of scrolling through her camera roll and seeing her true self reflected back. The surge of belonging when introducing herself with her real name and hearing it echoed without hesitation. Some days, it was all too much, and Noah broke down sobbing in Charlotte or Dr. Kamal's arms, wondering if she was strong enough to walk this path. But even in her lowest moments, Noah knew with bone-deep certainty that there was no turning back now. For all the hardships of transition, the alternative, suffocating in the straight jacket of her assigned gender for the rest of her life, was unthinkable. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.